So Biden's first veto, get this, is going to be in a defense of ESG investing, which they tried to implement via a Department of Labor rule. Let me explain to you exactly what's going on, because you've probably seen it in the news. It's a technical issue. It's one that I've spent the last three years of my life uh, dedicated to addressing. Let me actually explain it. So what happened was President Biden's Department of Labor last year made a new rule that would allow retirement fund managers to take into account environmental and social factors, what they called collateral benefits other than investment return into account when investing your retirement funds. That was a change from the prior status quo. It also reveals what a lie was embedded in the ESG investing movement, which said that they're taking into account the climate and they're taking into account racial equity. That was just about long run value creation. That's what the likes of BlackRock said forever. Well, guess what? If it really was about long run value creation, then the Biden administration wouldn't have to change the rules to expressly say they had to take into account collateral benefits other than investment returns. So that's red flag number one. Red flag number two is when Biden put up this rule initially, because they knew this was going to be controversial, what they said was, hey, we have to disclose it prominently to retirees. That was in the draft rule last summer. That's when I wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal criticizing it, calling on them not to finalize the rule. Well, guess what? They went the other direction. They finalized the rule late last year anyway, and they took out the disclosure requirements. So saying that you could not only could you do this legally as a retirement fund manager, but that you could do it without even expressly disclosing it to the retirees. And why did they say that? One of the reasons they cited was that it would have a chilling effect. That's what they said. Chilling effect on the use of ESG factors. What does that mean? It means that they were afraid that if they were required to disclose that they were using these ESG factors, retirees would say, absolutely not. That's what they call their chilling effect. Anyway, this rule went into effect. Now, the remarkable thing is that the Senate voted with the support of a couple of Democrats to say, absolutely not. You don't know why? And I applaud those Democrats for, for a couple of Democrats, Sinema and Manchin, for coming along and saying this, which is we should not be weaponizing retirement funds of everyday Americans to advance anyone's political objective. And expressly, the rule calls for allowing it on the basis of their words, collateral benefits other than investment returns. So it's right there in the face of the rule. President Biden is nonetheless going to veto that legislation. So his first veto is going to be on this topic of ESG. And I think that's so telling. It's really important because what's at stake in this ESG debate is really not some technical issue about finance or investing. That's what it sounds like sometimes. It's a 1776 question. It is the question of who actually governs this country. Is it the people who we elect through the democratic process or is it a private group of elites that make backroom deals through capital markets to decide what environmental and social agendas govern? Old world Europe had a view on this. Old world Europe said, and most of human history said that citizens cannot be trusted to sort out the most basic societal questions, today the environmental and social questions, and that you need to decide that in the back of palace walls. That's how they did in old world Europe. Now they've decided that they want it done in the back alleys of New York City or in the back walls of Park Avenue of a corner office. And that's what's at stake today. It's not just a threat to capitalism, as Milton Friedman worried about. It is that too. I mean, companies aren't as good at what they do when they're forced to adopt racial equity audits or emissions caps. And that's what the ESG movement does. But it's also this threat to democratic self-governance because what it means is what it says is that the citizens can't be trusted to sort out climate change or racial injustice through the political process. That's why the elites that be, including the powers that be in capital markets, have to settle it through economic force through the back door instead. That's why this issue is fundamental. It is fundamental to what it means to be an American. It's not a Democrat versus Republican 2023 question. It is a 1776 question. I'm proud to say I've been at the forefront of this for the last three years. I actually started a company, Strive, that directly competes against these ESG promoting asset managers like BlackRock. I don't believe in just pointing out a problem. I believe in delivering solutions. Yes, including through the market where possible. But in order to really fix this, we have a cultural cancer at the heart of our country too. And that's why I'm running for president to actually change that culture in a bottom up way as well. And it's not gonna automatically just be solved through the market. We're going to have to solve it through the front door as well. I'm very proud of Republican colleagues across the country, governors, you know, policymakers, some of these senators as well, for being great 
uh, you know, foot soldiers in this battle. I think I'm, I'm proud of people actually coming around to understanding an issue that was, co- it's a complicated issue. It's an issue that took a while for Republicans to wake up to. I'm really proud for, of where we've gotten, but now we need to actually do something about it and wake up to the reality that these are not just threats to capitalism, they're threats to our constitutional republic itself. And you can mark my word, as a presidential candidate, I'm gonna stay every bit out in front of this issue as I have during my time in the private sector. Thanks a lot, more to say soon.